You're looking at the Southwood County 2000 field just prior to kickoff on Thursday, the 18th of September. You see the Assumption Royals huddled up for the last time before the game will begin, clad in all blue with the white numerals and the white lettering. They are facing tonight the Pirates of Gilman High School. Assumption coming into this football game with a 1-3 and three record. The win at Thorpe and they are facing a Gilman team that is 0 and 4. So it's Assumption and Gilman on River Cities Community Access along with our producer and videographer David Ballerstein. I'm Milton Van Atta. Thank you for joining us and enjoying prep football here in the Southwood County area. Final instructions for the Royals from head coach Jeff Sullivan before they kick off here to the Pirates. Fascinating thing about this football game that we'll share some information from as the course of the football game unfolds tonight. These two rosters are probably as young of rosters as you're going to find in a prep football game this year. There are 59 players on the two rosters combined. 23 of them are freshmen, 15 are sophomores. 38 of the 59 players suited up for the football game tonight are freshmen or sophomores. In fact, on the Assumption roster, there's a single senior. That's it, one. So the rosters are incredibly young uh, when you put the two teams together for the football game tonight. So let's play some football. It will be Brandon Burkhauser to kick it away for the Royals. Gilman has two men back, and they're standing at their own 14-yard line. Zach Sonnenteg and James Copenhaver. It'll be to the short man at the 30, and he's got to about the 35-yard line. Tucker Schmuckle fielded that punt. He's one of the starting offensive linemen for the Pirates, and they're going to step in with the football at their own 35. Temperature is in the mid-50s and probably will fall to around 50 or maybe the high 40s before the game is over. Just a, just a trickle of a breeze coming from the southeast tonight. Ideal conditions for this mid, soon to be late September night here in Southwood County. And it's an inside handoff. Short gain, nice job inside by Tyler Erdman along with his teammates on that Royal defense. Going straight ahead, it was Jesse Ogle. He goes, well, they're gonna mark it pretty close to the 39 yard line. So we're gonna give him that yard up to the 39, four yard pickup, and we're gonna call it second down and six for the Pirates. Chance Rosemeyer, the quarterback, is a sophomore. And he hands off inside. Ooh, big hit. The Royals with a big hit there, and I hope that I can get that number for you. You know, it's going to be obscured to me. They're saying uh, Colt Linsmeyer, who, by the way, is that one senior on the Royal roster, made a big hit at the 42-yard line. It's third down and four. Third and four. Double tight end formation, one receiver to the far side. Rosemeyer gives inside, nothing doing. It's Tyler Erdman again making the tackle. He got help from one of the linebackers who I think was Nathaniel Clark. They combined for the stop at the 44. It's going to be fourth and one. And it looks like Gilman will go for it here on fourth down as they near midfield. Everybody bunched in tight. Rosemeyer, first down, ooh, big hit, just a big hit inside. Hitting him high was Colt Linsmeyer, grabbing him low was Carl Bathke, but the first down is James Coppenhaver with the first down to the 46 and a half yard line. From there, the Pirates have their first down. Big hitting from the Royal defense to open this one up. Rosemeyer pitches it out. Again, it's Coppenhaver. He's into Royal territory, and he's near a first down at the 43-yard line. We'll see here. 
I think that the linesman on the near side is going to mark him out of bounds at the 45. So he's two yards short of the first down, but it's a nice gain on first down for the Pirates. We'll face a second down and two. Slot back is Sonnentag with Ogle and Coppenhaver behind Rosemeyer. Lead draw, it's a first down to Ogle. He's inside of the 40-yard uh, line down to the 37-yard line. That's a nice pickup of about eight yards for Ogle, and he's got another Pirate first down. Both of these teams in the Clover Wood Conference, a conference that is led by Athens, Owen Withy, and Abbotsford at 4-0. We'll get you those conference standings as the game goes on. Right now it's a first in 10. Copenhaver has the 35 and has the 33-yard line. Looks like Trent Collick was the first one there, getting a little help from Carl Bathke at the 34. We're going to give him four and call it second down and six. It's Ogle inside. Not much doing there. Look at the Royals surround him. One, two, three, four, five of them. And Jacob Goats, the junior, is up off the bottom of the pile. So let's, let's call it a two-yard pickup for Ogle, and that'll bring up a third down and four. And unless they were to lose yardage, they're likely to be in a situation where they will go on fourth down here. Let's see what happens on this third down play. First down run is number 14, James Copenhaver, one of only six seniors on the Gilman Pirates roster for tonight's football game. 31 players on the roster, 11 freshmen, eight sophomores, six juniors, six seniors. Very, very young squads on both sides of the football field. So the first and 10 is at the 26 yard line. This is a nice drive by Gilman to start the game. They've already used up about four minutes on it. Copenhaver coming to the near side, 25. Slips inside a would-be tackler and a flag goes down. This might be against Gilman's number 72, Logan Anderson. It is in fact against Gilman. And this is going to be a big mark off. And so Gilman, after moving the ball rather briskly, now is going to have a first and very long situation. It's going to be a point of foul infraction, so the mark off will come to the, from the 23. Man, no microphone needed. You could hear the referee, illegal block offense. Takes it back to the 35 yard line. It's an, uh, 10 yard mark off. It's first and 20 for Gilman. Rosemeyer pitching it out to Copenhagen. And he gets to the outside, breaks a couple of tackles, and then he is down at around the 23 as he bursts up the far sidelines. For 13 yards, James Copenhaver with the run. And that's a big deal there. That's 13 on first down. And now it's a more manageable second down and seven. This is the formation that we've seen on each and every offensive down. Rosemeyer, Ogle, Ogle not much doing. He's inside the 20, but I don't suspect he got past the 19 yard line. Looked like Jacob Goats again led the charge, though it was a group effort by the Royals. Third down 
and about three and a half needed for the first down. And again, we suspect without penalty or loss of yardage, they would go on fourth down if necessary, of course. First down, run, and still driving his way forward is Copenhaver. Came off that right side and just powered it for the first down. It's outside of the 10, however, so they still could get a first down inside of the one yard line. Oh, and there you see number 50 of Gilman. That's Cole Johnson uh, jumping the snap count, and that will cost Gilman five yards. So they move it back to the 15-yard line, actually closer to the 16, and it'll be first in 15 there. Again, a first down at about the half-yard line, the third-yard line. Uh, for this Gilman team. Oh, big hit in the backfield. There's number 58 again, Jacob Goats. He has been uh, very, very visible on this first possession defensively. He and Colt Lindsmeyer making some big hits. And that's a loss back to the 17. It's a loss of a yard and it'll bring up a second down. And now close to 16 yards to go, and the clock is down to 540 to go in the first period. Assumption hasn't touched the ball yet, and half the period's gone. First pass, Rosemeyer throwing it out to the corner. It's gonna be picked off. The Royals have it, and it's intercepted along the far side. And I wish that I could identify the young man who picked it off, but I cannot for you. The Royals get the turnover after the six minute and 34 second drive of Gilman. And they have it at their own 15 yard line. Jacob Sullivan at quarterback. It's Colt Linsmeyer with the football pushing his way across the 20 to the 23 yard line. That looks like a gain of eight. We'll bring up a second down and two. Three backs, one receiver. Sullivan's gonna pitch it out here to John Tricky, looking for the corner. He's got the first down and he's pushed out of bounds into his own sideline at the 31 yard line with the first down yardage. John Tricky, the 5'8 junior. And they mark it at the 32 yard line, so it's a first and 10 Royals there. It's Linsmeyer again to the 35, he slung across the 35 to about the 36 yard line. That's a pickup of four. The Royals coming off of a tough stretch. The last two weeks they have played Abbotsford, who's four and O oh in the conference, one of the tri-leaders. Then that outstanding Athens uh, fighting Blue Jay team last week. And that's another four and O oh tri-leader in the conference and so they're back home tonight and taking on Gilman. It's second down and six. It's the inside man that's got the football to the 40-yard line. 
Let's see who that is. It's Nathaniel Clark. Athens, Owen Withy, Abbotsford are at 4-0. Newman, McDonald, and Loyal are two games back at 2-2. Two and two. Assumption and Greenwood Granton are 1-3. And, and then this Gilman team and Thorpe are 0-4 oh for the Cloverwood Conference standings as we start this weekend of prep football. Third down and two for the Royals. Sullivan still has it and he's hit hard and he's thrown back to the 36 yard line. I think he wanted to pitch that ball to Colt Linsmeyer, but he never had the chance. The penetration was so swift and strong right up the middle that he never got the chance to get it off. So they mark it back at the 37 yard line and this will bring up a third down and five. And they're going to, excuse me, a fourth down and five, and they're going to punt it away. Colt Linsmeyer into the fair catch of Zach Sonnentag. So that was a third down and two play, and with the negative yardage on it, they choose to punt it away, and uh, Linsmeyer punts it to Sonnentag at the 34, and with 2.46 to go in the first period, it'll be Gilman football. So we played, what, nine minutes, 14 seconds, and we've had one pass play, in the football game, and that's led to a, a quickly moving period. Copenhaver looking for something, gets nothing, and he is taken down short of the line of scrimmage, which is the 35. They're going to mark him at the 34 after a loss of one. And just some outstanding pursuit defensively for this Royal defense tonight. Second down and 11. It's a draw play and a nice gain up near a first down and getting a first down, I believe, at the 45. That was number 26, Jesse Ogle getting exactly the 11 yards that he needed. And when this clock rolls, there will be two minutes to go in the first period. Copenhaver straight ahead until Clark gets him at the Royal 48. That's a seven-yard pickup, and and I know we, we played less than a period, but you know we look at the standings and we see this Gilman team is 0-4. They have not looked like an 0-4 football team. They've got the one turnover, but they have not looked like a, an 0-4 football team at all. Second down and four from the Royal 48-yard line. Copenhaver looking. Now he has showing the patience, gets to the 40. First down, and he's taken out of bounds there by Colt Lindsmeyer. Tyler Erdman coming in along with Goats as well, but they give him the 39, and that is a nine yard pickup and a Gilman first down. Copenhaver breaking into the open. He is going to score the touchdown. It's a 39-yard touchdown run by James Copenhaver with 58 seconds to go in the first period. So it is six to nothing in favor of the Gilman Pirates. They will go for two points here. And it's Copenhaver. Will he have the seam? He will. It's a two-point uh, conversion 
as Copenhaver takes care of it, both from the 39-yard run and the conversion run, eight to nothing in favor of Gilman, late first period. Royals kick receive team out to receive this kickoff. Colton Schmidt will kick it away for the Pirates. Royals have two men back at the 13 yard line. It's a kick bounding across the ground to the 30, and a good job here for Trent Colick returning it up to the 39-yard line and giving the Royals some nice field position to open up their second offensive possession. The first stalled as they neared midfield, and they'll get it back with 54 seconds to go in this first period. That's Trent Colick, number 33, splitting out wide to the far side. Clark and Tricky and Linsmeyer, nope. Inside handoff, nothing doing. Nothing doing there. Clark inside, and I, I would like to correct that. It was Nate Weisenbeck who was in at tailback. He's now checked out, and Tricky is in there with Linsmeyer and with Clark. Second down in 10. Tight end, Grunhofer switches ends of the line. It's Linsmeyer in motion and he's got the pitch, penetration, and he's taken down back at the 34 yard line by Colton Schmidt, the man who just kicked off a moment ago. And that ends the first period. After one, it is Gilman eight and Assumption nothing. And you're watching Assumption Royal Football on River City's Community Access. The second period will begin with the Royals facing a third down and 16. They've got to get the ball just short of midfield for a first down. And they send two receivers out wide to the far side. Sullivan pitches, and it's a fumble by Clark, who's on it. That is still loose, and the scramble is on at the 32-yard line. Clark never got possession of that pitch, and it's recovered by the Pirates right around the 32 or 33-yard line of the Royals. So Assumption turns it over. Their first of the night. And the Pirates look to build on their eight to nothing lead. That was the first play of the second quarter. No, apparently they say the Royals recovered because the punt team is out there. I, I stand corrected. I got mixed up. I thought I saw the call that it had been recovered by the Pirates. They did not. It's instead a fourth down and 18. And so the Royals will kick it away. Linsmeyer with a line drive kick fielded here at the 35. Coming to the near sidelines, this is their great back. Copenhaver, he's down the sidelines to the 40, and he's taken out of bounds around the 38-yard line. Well, that's the star of the game so far. Number 14, James Copenhaver of the Gilman Pirates. And so had it, had it been a turnover, they would have gotten it in the 
vicinity of the 32, they returned the punt to the 38-yard line. So it's pretty much uh, the, the same starting spot for the Pirates here. To the 34-yard line again, Copenhaver. He gets almost four on first down. It's a big defensive possession for the Royals. Down eight nothing early second quarter. Rosemeyer gives it to Ogle. And he's taken down around the 32. And we're gonna be facing a third down and four. Third down play for Gilman. They've attempted one throw and it was intercepted. Otherwise, they've been quite efficient on the ground. Copenhaver, very near a first down at the 28-yard line. I think that he may have gotten enough yardage there for the first down, is it? Awaiting the, the signal from our officiating crew, taking a long look, and they're going to decide to go ahead and measure it. It's that close. I thought that perhaps forward progress might have gotten him the first down, and indeed it may have. We'll stretch out the chains here in a moment. <laughs> Fourth down. <laughs> Fourth down and inches. Perhaps it's plural. Fourth, maybe it's fourth down and an inch. It's very, very close. Smart money's on James Copenhaver here, number 14. Keep your eye on him. There he is, first down. And he is fighting his way to the 20 yard line. So on fourth and inches, he gets eight close to nine yards in the first down for Gilman. And they continue to march. The Royals have had trouble slowing Gilman in this football game. Remember, First possession, they marched it all the way down, had a first and 10 at the 11, got backed up by penalty and ended up throwing an interception. Second possession was the touchdown and now they're moving again on their third possession. Ogle steps outside into the secondary and inside of the 15 yard line. Looks like they're marking him one yard short of a first down. So nine yards there by Jesse Ogle. Oh, there was a, seemed to be a poor snap, but the, just as that happened, the Penalty flag flies. Full start against the offense. So that's going to back it up to the 17 yard line. First down is just about the 10. So we're gonna call it second down and seven for the Pirates. Copenhaver into a sea of blue. Carl Bathke was there, Nathaniel Clark was there. Dominic Schneider, 79 also, right there at the point of attack. 
So third down, we're going to call it three. Copenhaver breaks loose for the goal line, brought down at the one. First and goal there for the Pirates, who are on top, eight to nothing. First and goal. Rosemeyer goes to Ogle and he's got the touchdown with 7.36 to go in the second period. And Gilman moves on top by a count of 14 to nothing. It just seems implausible in, in, in watching the first 16 and a half minutes of this football game that this Gilman team is 0-4. Now, maybe they've had some important kids hurt who are getting back. Maybe they played a killer schedule. I don't know what. But they have not looked like an 0-4 football team uh, so far tonight. Rosemeyer pitches out to Copenhaver. And once again, he converts. And it's 16 to nothing in favor of the Gilman Pirates. 16 to nothing. After this home football game tonight, the Royals are going to spend a couple of weeks on the road. They will be heading to Loyal on Friday night, September the 26th, and they're going to be at Chippewa Falls McDonald on October the 4th. They'll return for two home games to close out their regular season against Newman Catholic here on October 11th and Owen Withy on October the 17th. When these two teams matched up last year, Gilman won the football game 37 to 18. But remember, these two teams both very, very young. Their rosters with both with the majority of freshmen and sophomores. 16 to nothing, Gilman. You take a look at their kickoff team. Colton Schmidt's going to kick it away. Weisenbeck and Linsmeyer are back at their own 15 yard line. Linsmeyer runs up, ooh, short hops it, but he's got it and he's to the 30. He's got some room in the middle of the field at the 40. And he's up to close to the 45 yard line. That, that one made you hold your breath because it short hopped him and, and you could see the ball slamming off of him and, and squirting away, but it did not. He, he handled the short hop and he brought it up to the 44 yard line where the Royals take over. And we are nearing the midway point of the second period and it's 16 to nothing Gilman. Sullivan rolls to pass, throwing it short to Tricky at midfield. And near, nope, they're gonna mark him out at the 48, which is going to leave him almost two yards short of the first down. Whoa, fumble. Gilman is signaled to have it at their own 45 yard line. The running back, Tricky, never got a handle on it. And it squirted into the line where Gilman recovered at the 45 yard line. So they've got it again. Rosemeyer to throw, 
A wobbly pass inside caught by Sonnenteig to the 35-yard line. That was a poor, poor pass. It, it had no zip on it. It was a high, wobbling floater. But Sonnenteig, the receiver, recognized that, stepped inside of the defender and made the catch and turned a, a pass that was looking to be a, come a turnover into a first down and a positive play for Gilman. They've got it at the Royal 35. Ogle, nowhere to go. He, he did not get inside of the 35. He was pushed back by a host of Royals. One of those was Nate Weisenbeck. Copenhaver. Well, he, he just runs with that controlled patience. You know, you, you, you got to burst through a hole, don't you, in football? That, that's true, but, but, he, but he does not get ahead of his blockers. He shows his patience in the hole, waits for his blocking to develop, and then and acts upon that. Uh, very impressive part of, of his game. Give him five, second down, excuse me, third down and five after first down play was snuffed, right? Third down and five. There's Copenhaver. He's got a first down. He's got more inside of the 20 yard line. We, uh, we do not keep stats of the game here in our River Cities Community Access booth, but just you've got to believe that he's up there in that range of 75 to 80 yards already. And we're just under the midway point of the second period, 5.47 to go. The score is 16 to nothing in favor of Gilman, and they're on the move again. They are down at the Royal 19-yard line with the first and 10. Rosemeyer, again it's Copenhaver, sifting his way near the 15-yard line. It's Ogle, looks to have a first down near the seven yard line. And that will bring up a first and goal for the Gilman Pirates. They're already on top 16 to nothing. Copenhaver into the end zone for his second touchdown of the night. And it becomes 22 to nothing in favor of Gilman. And we can rightly expect that they will go for the two point conversion they have on every other opportunity tonight. A 
And a timeout is called by Gilman. Their first of the half, 4.41 to go. 22-0 Gilman. We return with Gilman going for the two-point conversion here. As you look at the line, Ogles 26, Copenhaver is 14. The pitch is to Copenhaver, and he has the two points. So it is 24 to nothing in favor of Gilman. Three touchdowns and three two-point conversions. So Colton Schmidt is ready to kick it off again. Colt Lindsmeyer, Nate Weisenbeck are back for the Royals. This is something of a shock, I would believe, to the, to the Royals expected to be very competitive in this football game, and they just haven't been able to do that yet. 24 to nothing. They'll let Colt Lindsmeyer field it at the 20. And he's all the way into Gilman territory at the 49-yard line. He got as close as one man away from breaking that one for the Royals. So the Royals now will look to take advantage of this good field position late in the second quarter and get themselves back in it. They're down 24 to nothing with 4.33 to go. Oh, Clark is hit in the backfield, stung in the backfield by Dakota Lee. Forward progress is back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up a second down and 10. Lindsmeyer is the motion man. Sullivan rolls to throw as pressure, throws it out, and it is picked off at the 25. And then taken away by John Tricky. Well, now that's a play you're not going to see every day. The pass was intercepted by Zach Sonnentag, and as he runs the interception back, Tricky uh, takes it away, picks his pocket and takes it away, and the result is that the Royals get it at the 25-yard line. That is a rare double turnover. The Royals turn it over with the interception. Gilman turns it over with the fumble, and it's just, it's a net uh, 25 yards uh, for the Royals. Down to the Gilman 25. Salvin throws in the middle, it's caught. 
And it's Grundhofer grinding his way down to the 13-yard line and the 12-yard line. That's a first down pass play. So after the interception, the Royals choose to go right back to the air and they get the completion to Grundhofer. Tricky's the motion man. He's got the football and he's hit hard at the 10 yard line. Mark it back at the 11 yard line, second and nine. Rolling out Sullivan, throwing, caught, and touchdown! Looks like Nathaniel Clark, and it is. Clark, who started off the year as a receiver and tight end, moved into the backfield, makes the touchdown catch from 11 yards out. Twenty-four six, and the Royals will go for two. That was a much, much needed score for the Royals. Tricky slashes in. So it's 24 to eight and now the question becomes is how will we look back upon that interception fumble? Well, we look at it as the turning point in this football game, that Gilman had a turnover with a 24-0 lead and then turned it over on the very interception play at the Royals get it and score quickly. 2.41 to go second period, 24-8. Brandon Burkhauser to kick it away. Looks like Sonnentag and Copenhaver are back deep for Gilman. Line drive kick that Sonnentag will field to the 20. He's heading to the far side. Now back to the middle, oh, back to this side, and down he goes. Weisenbeck makes the stop at the 24, and now the Royals look, 25, excuse me, the, the uh, Royals look to figure out a way to stop Gilman, which other than forcing the turnover on the first possession, they have not done for three consecutive possessions. We'll keep a close eye on the clock. There's 2.33 to go in the first half. Ogle spins in the hole for two and a half or three. Meyer gives it 
to all goal. Gets to the 31 yard line. It's going to be third down and four. Trent Colick was in the hole, leading the charge for the Royals. Clock's down to a minute 40. The Royals were able to get the football back here after this third down play. They would have two timeouts to go. Rosemeyer gives. It is a first down, however, up to the 38 or nine yard line. Copenhaver, the ball carrier. So now we'll see how interested Gilman is in trying to score here before the half. Remember, they've attempted to pass the football twice. Once was intercepted, the other time it was a very, very poorly thrown ball. Oh, that ball's loose, and it's picked up by Copenhaver. Tricky was the first man there to bring him down. That's a huge loss. And now one would suspect that Gilman might take a knee a time or two and just get out of the half because that was, that was close to being a disaster for the Pirates. It would have been a huge deal if, if the Royals would have been able to get on that football, get another turnover, and have a chance to tighten this game up before the half, as it is that they're going to go in with a lot of momentum. This figures to be the final play of the half, Rosemeyer. Brandon Burkhauser was right there to stuff the run by Ogle. And they'll mark it ready for play, but there'll be no snap. It will be halftime. Gilman gets a 39-yard touchdown run from Copenhaver, a one-yard touchdown run by Ogle, and a seven-yard touchdown run by Copenhaver. 24 points for Gilman. The Royals get the touchdown pass from Sullivan to Clark. And it's 24-8 Gilman at halftime. We'll have the second half after this on River City's Community Access. Moments before we began recording for the second half, one of the coaches on the Royal side exhorting the fans on the Royal side, we're gonna need you the whole half, he said. Royals are going to get the football to start this second half. They're down 24 to eight, but they did get the last score of the first half and carry a certain amount of momentum into this half, but still trail by 16 and could use some success early in the second half to, to get back into the football game. Colton Schmidt will kick it away for these Gilman Pirates with the white jerseys. Look, that's our purple helmets and uh, pants and lettering. Royals, of course, in the royal blue with the white lettering and white numerals piping. Second half is underway. Bounding to Linsmeyer at the 20. Has some room, he's across the 40, still on his feet, and he is out all the way to the 48 yard line, an ideal way to start this second half for the Royals with great field position near midfield. Jacob Sullivan, the freshman, will quarterback the Royals. We've seen Linsmeyer and Clark in the backfield and then seen uh, Weisenbeck and Tricky alternate at that other tailback. Trent Colick has been the receiver throughout the course of the night. First and 10 from the 48 for the Royals. Here's Tricky trying to find the edge. Nice spin move back to the inside and into Gilman territory at about the 47 yard line. It's gonna be a six yard pickup on first down. Uh, Bring up a second down and four. Rolling out, it's Sullivan. Throw! 
throwing. Tricky, the intended receiver at the 42-yard line. That's incomplete, and it'll bring up a third down and four. Third down. Pitches to Linsmeyer. He's going to have the first down at the 43 yard line. So they got exactly what they needed on that third down play. They get the first down and they keep the drive alive. On these near hash marks, you get a great look at it. Number four, Jacob Sullivan. Still has it. Ooh, tricky back to get it, and he's in trouble and down all the way back at the 43-yard line. Oh, my. That is a 14-yard loss. That's not only a backbreaker, it's a heartbreaker. It'll bring up a second down and about 24 yards to go. We lose football again. And Sullivan gets back on it, but it will result in a loss of another Yard, and third down, and very, very long, almost 25 yards long. Something of a delay here in getting the play into the huddle. Royals will bring Colic and Tricky both split out to the near side. Sullivan will roll this way, feeling some pressure now. Let's it go. He's got a man. It's caught. And it's near a first down at the 32 yard line. Tricky made the catch. Oh my, on third and 25. I think the Royals just converted. They're going to take a long look at it to see if it is a first and ten or it's a fourth and inches. That does not change. The, it's a first down. Just a beautiful play because there was pressure coming on Jacob Sullivan, but he threw a beautiful ball that was caught, and they get 25 on third and 25. Let's see if that is a turning point in the game. It just just like we thought that the, the fumble that Tricky caused after the interception could be a turning point. Pitch is to Tricky. Again, penetration, and he's taken down. Back at the 37-yard line. Five-yard loss and as the Pirates break through and get that wide run stopped. Well... Can the Royals dig out of this hole? Second and 15. They just converted third and 25. <laughs> Sullivan's hit. I don't know what he wanted to do, but he never had the chance. If that was going to be a pitch to Linsmeyer coming this way, if it was going to be a rollout option pass, I don't know what the call was, but they never had the chance. Cole Johnson was there, and he dropped Sullivan at the 40-yard line. Is it possible that two plays after converting a third and 25, that the Royals have something for third and 18? Let's watch.
Pirates show blitz. Sullivan rolling out. Throws. It's caught at the 30. And down to the 29-yard line. See who that is. It's Trent Colick making the catch. It's third and eight. So what will the Royals do? Will they go on third and eight from their opposition 31? Do you punt and try to pin them down inside of the 10-yard line? It looks like the offense is staying on the field. And that on third and eight, or fourth and eight, excuse me, they're going to go for it. They're at least going to line up. Penalty would not secure them a first down, but uh, would get them in a situation where it was much more manageable. In the pocket, they're going to throw it out to Grundhofer. He slips inside. He's got the first down at the 20 yard line. Oh, my. That is digging out of the hole twice. Converting a third and a 25 and a fourth down and eight yards. Beautiful execution, Sullivan to Grundhofer. Now you're talking about uh, freshman to freshman there, fans, as you watch that. So what, 15-year-old to 15-year-old? <laughs> if they've had their 15th birthday. So it's a first down. Digging inside, Clark. Oh, late flag, what's this going to be? Because this is not going to be a, a five yarder. It's gonna be a significant penalty. You hear loud uh, protestations from the Gilman sideline. One of the coaches yelling out, no way. But this, I think, is going to be a big mark-off against Gilman. Let's see what Mark Horn says about it. He's got the call for us. Personal foul. No face mask indication, just a personal foul indication. And now the Royals have it, first and goal from the nine-yard line trying to convert on their first possession of the third quarter and close the gap with Gilman. Sullivan throwing it to the corner. No, I thought he might be coming for Colic at the the pylon. Instead, he may have been going for Colt Linsmeyer, circling out of the backfield. It was not close to either on that occasion, so it's second down and goal. The Royal touchdown was a pass from Sullivan to Clark. Late second quarter. Now, off the option, there's a loose football. And who's got it? It's, I believe, Colt Linsmeyer that got back on it at the 24 yard line. I, now, I don't have the availability of replay at this moment. I think that ball, that pitch was deflected. I think one of the Pirates got penetration, got a fingertip on the football because it looked like the trajectory of the pitch changed and was behind Linsmeyer. He had to cover it up. So is it possible that on a drive that the Royals converted a third and 25 and a fourth and eight that they now can convert this play, which is third and goal from the 21-yard line? In trouble, Sullivan from behind, sacked at the 30-yard line. And it's the man who's dominated defensively tonight for Gilman, Cole Johnson, that makes the play. They mark it at the 29, but now what do you do? It's, it's fourth and goal. You're out of field goal range. You have 29 yards to go. Is it possible on a two-goal situation you punt the football in an effort to pin Gilman inside of the 10? What, what will they do? No, they're going to run an offensive play. That, that's quite clear. This is a fourth and goal play. But it has been an extraordinary drive, so why not this? Sullivan has time to throw it deep in the middle. 
And it's deflected and falls to the ground incomplete at the 10 yard line. So the Royals turn it over on downs and Gilman will take over. They will get it at the 29 yard line. Well, that is just, that is not a drive you're gonna see every day. Quite extraordinary in many ways. The Royals had the football for six minutes and 20 seconds, but unfortunately do not dent the scoreboard. Remains 24 to eight in favor of the Gilman Pirates. Copenhaver, who was the star for the Pirates in the first half, is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Again, it's Copenhaver. He's going to make the 33 yard line. So that'll bring up a third down and about six yards to go. We've seen this formation on virtually every offensive play tonight. They haven't varied much. They've run their stuff. Copenhaver, look at him sift through and get a first down at the 41. And, and there's that patience. He, he just let that play develop and remained a part of it without rushing. And if he rushes and forces that play, he does not get that first down. That was really a, a nice, nice run on his account. I know that uh, painful uh, conversion as far as the Royals are concerned, but I uh, have to give Copenhaver a little bit of credit as well. It's Ogle. He's got midfield. He's got the Royal 48-yard line. Eight on first and ten. Chance Rosemeyer is the quarterback of the Gilman Pirates, and he's one for two tonight. He's looking to throw for the third time. It's out to Copenhaver, first down, and to the Royal 40 and to the Royal 36-yard line. Well, he's, he's two for three, passing the football. He's actually completed all three. The third was an interception that the Royals had. So with the ball at the 30, well, they're going to mark it at the 37-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Royals. Draw play in the whole ogle. Still fighting, still fighting all the way down to the area of the 15 yard line. Oh, big hit there. I think that it was the, the mark of a Nathaniel Clark hit in the hole, and it was. Copenhaver was driven to the ground after a pickup of about two and a half yards.
And whistles indicate a penalty before the snap. Legal motion against Gilman. That'll cost them five yards and it'll bring up third, excuse me, second down in about 12. Rosemeyer throwing, and it is picked off. It's Colt Linsmeyer. And he is taken down at about the 17-yard line. Oh, that was a game saver there by Linsmeyer. It keeps the Royals in the football game. So how about that as a line for Chance Rosemeyer? He's thrown four passes. Two have been completed, and two have been intercepted. So let's see what the Royals are able to do with the football as they take over with a minute 47 to go in the third period. That is Clark bursting outside, still fighting, wanting to spin back inside at the 30. And he was taken down just across the 30-yard line. He gets a big first down run. The Royals could get in the end zone here. Boy, could we have an exciting end to this football game. Gilman scored the first 24, but ever since the Royals created the turnover on the interception and scored, it's, uh, it's, the momentum has been with the Royals until just a moment ago and the, when the first and goal stalled out. Here's the pitch to Linsmeyer. Oh, nice open field tackle at the 33-yard line. And that one stung Colt Linsmeyer. I don't know if what part of him is stung, but he's a little um, gimpy as he gets up after a one-yard pickup. That was Jesse Ogle, who we've seen featured throughout the night from the tailback position, making a beautiful open field tackle from his, uh, I think it looks like he's playing a safety position. Maybe corner, he's gonna guard Tricky here. It's gonna be over Tricky as he splits wide to the left. Blitz from Johnson. Can they spring the play? He can spring it for a nice gain across the 40 to the 41. Within two yards of the first down goes Nathaniel Clark. And we're down to 40 seconds to go in the third period. We've had no scoring here in the third. It's still Gilman 24 and Assumption 8. Big third and one play for the Royals. Oh, I don't know if he got there. That was Nathaniel Clark. And let's see where they mark it. They give him a good spot at the 42. And Mark Horn says first down. So that will end the third quarter because we just have six seconds to go. No scoring in the third quarter. In fact, we only had three possessions in that quarter. The Royals used over half of the period to drive down, but have a drive stall out after a first and goal at the nine turned into a fourth and goal from the 29. Gilman gets it back. They drive down. It looks like they're going in. The Royals get the turnover on the interception. Now they've got it back and they've moved it out to first and 10 at their own 43 yard line and the fourth quarter awaits us next. Fourth quarter will begin with the Royals having a first and 10 at their own 42 yard line, trying to fight their way back into this football game. They're down 24 to eight. Sullivan looking to throw. He's got his man, Linsmeyer, midfield. 
and tripped up by, guess who, Jesse Ogle. Ogle took him down in the open field a moment ago and it stung uh, the leg or ankle of Linsmeyer, but he was running well there and that's a pickup of nine yards on first and 10. Both Tricky and Colic go wide to the far side. Inside handoff to the 45 for the first down. That's Nathaniel Clark carrying the football. So it's first and 10 Royals and they mark it at the 46 yard line. Neither team has used a timeout here in the half. We're getting to the point in the game where this is almost a must score drive for the Royals. As the clock rolls down to 11 minutes to go in the fourth period. Sullivan slips a would-be sacker, now has all kinds of time and he makes the good decision to throw it out of bounds into the far side. Second and 10. Here's your second and 10 play. The pitch is to Linsmeyer. Oh, and he's hit hard by two of the Pirates. Colton Schmidt and Jesse Ogle sting him for a two yard loss back to the 48 yard line. So it'll be a second down and 12. Bobbing it for Tricky, he's got it at the 45. All the way down to near the 30 yard line. Well, that was a well thrown pass. that had to be executed beautifully with just the right speed and just the right arc because Tricky had to catch that in, in full motion. He couldn't have to slow down or adjust to that ball. He had to run right under it and up the sideline. And he did a beautiful play for the Royals and converts the second and long and at the 32, it's a first and 10. Clark, no, it's a pitch to Linsmeyer. Look at that room out there on the far side, cutting inside and down near the 20 yard line with another first down. So the Royals first and 10 at the Gilman 20 yard line. Tricky and Colic do not participate in the huddle. They stay out here wide left. And a whistle. And the Royals call a timeout to prevent a delay of game penalty, I believe. Number 10, John Tricky is shaking his right arm. He might have fallen on that awkwardly on that pass play and it might, might be fighting to get some feeling back down in that right arm. We'll watch that as this game continues. Royals use one of their timeouts here in the third period, their first, to stop the clock. They have a first and 10 at the 20 yard line of the Gilman Pirates, 24 to eight in favor of 
Gilman. Three touchdowns and three two-point conversions in that first half. First and ten play. Nice hard inside run by Clark. That's a good seven yards on first down. We'll bring up a second down and three. Nothing doing there, however. Again, it's Clark. So it'll be third and three, and you keep an eye out on the clock because there's eight and a half minutes to go in the game. The Royals only have two timeouts left, and they're down by 16 points. So a lot needs to fall into place, doesn't it? But the, the door of opportunity remains open for them. Third down and three. Sullivan looking to throw, lobs it up, and it's in and out of the hands of Linsmeyer. Fourth and three. Again, the receivers don't join the huddle. They stay split wide out to the near side. Fourth down. What is the Royal play call? Now Linsmeyer shakes loose, and they spread out the field. They hand it off, fighting and fighting and getting the first down is Clark. Oh. So they bring two receivers to the near side. They bring the motion man to the near side to spread out the defense, and then they run it up inside, and they get the first down. So it is now first and goal for the, from the nine with eight minutes, five seconds left in the fourth period. Clark inside of the five, and he's found his way to about the three yard line. Second and goal. If I just heard Mark Horn right, he's asked for 15 seconds off the clock. It says 7.52 right now, and that would run it down to 7.37. And I'm not, and I'm not sure why. Perhaps the, there we go. We're down to 7:37. Perhaps the clock did not run uh, at some point when it should have. But they run her down to 7:37. It's a second and goal. And Colt Linsmeyer is into the end zone for the touchdown. And that makes it 24 to 14. And now this conversion play becomes just as big a play as the touchdown was because you started this series down 16. You need the two touchdowns and the two conversions, especially you're down to 725 for the game and just two timeouts left. So you need. You 
Now the whistle stops play. The conversion was good. Sullivan threw to Grundhofer. But it's a motion call against the Royals. So now this makes it a an eight yard play to get the two points as opposed to a three yard play or two and a half yard play to a seven and a half yard play. Must have conversion here. Clark behind Sullivan. Jacob rolls right, looking, 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 under pressure, drag down. Derek Thorgerson makes the play. It remains 24 to 14. And let's see if with 7.25 to go, if the Royals down 10 consider a, an onside kick here. Gilman has moved the ball effectively on the ground throughout the night. And so it would, the Royals just have got to find the way to get the ball back twice and score twice. Brandon Burkhauser is the kicker. What will the Royals choose on the kickoff? It is an onside kick. Oh, the Royals had a chance at it. And I think that it bounced off of Grundhofer at the 49-yard line. I think he was going down to cover it, and it hit his leg and squirted forward, and then it was an easy play for the Gilman Pirates. Oh, so close there. Oh, so close. So Gilman takes over. Pirates are stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Jesse Ogle, the ball carrier. And, and that's really what their offense has been tonight. Hand off to Ogle, hand off to Copenhaver. And just four passes all night long. It's second and 10. Pitches out to Copenhaver. First down into the secondary, and he is gone. He is going to turn this in to a 58-yard touchdown run. Beautiful run. And again, he made it at the start of the run with his patience at the point of attack, waiting for the play to develop, keeping up with the play, but not rushing the play. Oh, that was a beautiful run by Copenhaver. 
He's got one from 39. He's got one from 58 now. 30 to 14 in favor of the Pirates. Rosemeyer throws incomplete, intended for Colton Schmidt. So the score will remain 30 to 14. We are midway through this fourth period. Colton Schmitz will kick it away. Wisen backhand Linsmeyer at the 15 for the Royals, who need a touchdown, a two-point conversion, an onside kick, a touchdown, and a two-point conversion. That's pretty much their lone hope to send this one into overtime now. And they have a man breaking through. And down to the 47-yard line goes Trent Colick. Line drive kick that he fielded, a burst up the near hash mark, and was one man away from breaking that. Now that would have changed a lot of things, wouldn't it? At the 47. Sullivan rolling right, in trouble, and down he goes. Derek Thorgerson, who made the sack on the two-point conversion a moment ago, makes the sack there. Second and 18 after the sack. Draw play, Clark bursting through midfield, 45, head down to the 43-yard line. We're going to bring up a third down in about five or six for the Royals. They're going to come right to the line, five and a half minutes to go, 30 to 14, Gilman. Clark, he did not get the first down at the 40. Third and three, third and three coming up. Excuse me, fourth and three. Beg your pardon, fourth down and three yards to go. And we'll be under five minutes to go when the ball is snapped. Come on, 
Sullivan throwing. It's caught by Linsmeyer, but he's taken down on the spot by Jesse Ogle, and the Royals were turn it over on downs with 4.36 to go in the football game. It'll be three weeks before the Royals are back here at Southwood County 2000. They'll head to Loyal and Chippewa Falls McDonald before taking on Newman Catholic here on October the 11th. Copenhaver, he's got two yards on first down. Gilman is not interested in acquiring more points necessarily. They're interested in getting four minutes and 10 seconds off the clock. They played a pretty good football game for a team that came into this 0-4. Copenhaver bursting through all the way down to the Royal 47. He has a first down. And I would think that he's in the neighborhood of 150 to 175 yards rushing here tonight. There he is again. And he's to the 45. Number 75 there is Ben Ververka. He's a freshman getting some action here in the football game tonight. Three minutes to go. Gilman 30 and Assumption 14. Copenhaver, Copenhaver, excuse me. Copenhaver brings up a third down and five. Copenhaver, look at him slither through would-be tacklers and get himself just enough for the first down. And timeout is called with 2.13 to go. And Gilman now in position to run out the clock on this victory. And it'd be nice to know their story this year because they've not looked like an 0-4 team tonight. I, I don't know if... Uh, don't know if, if, if they've had injuries and guys have gotten healthy. You know, I, I don't know if, if they've played just a, a killer schedule, if it's been filled up with the, the, you know, the Athens and the Abbotsfords and... The Owen Withies, I don't know that, but boy, they have not looked like an 0 4 football team. 30 to 14, Gilman, leading assumption with 2.13 to go. Fresh set of downs here. Uh, that, that timeout was the second of the night for the Royals. And I, I told you a moment ago that Copenhaver had gotten the first down. They marked him short by less than a yard. So this is a fourth down play. I, I stand corrected. But there he's got the first down to the 34-yard line.
Clock is running at a minute 55. I'll give it to Ogle this time. And Jesse fights his way to the 26 yard line, close to seven, eight yards on first down. Under a minute and a half now, fans. Ogle, nowhere to go. I see Clark, 88, and I'll try to get the other two guys who were in on that tackle. One was Tricky, 10, and I don't know that I'll be able to get that other number. Might have been Weisenbeck who made the stop. Royals use their last timeout with a minute and four seconds to go. It will be third and one for the Pirates. Third and one. So we look back. Copenhaver from 39 yards out with 58 seconds to go in the first period. Ogle, a one-yard touchdown run midway through the second. Copenhaver, a seven-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversions after each. It was 24 to nothing in favor of Gilman. The Royals threw an interception, but Don Tricky stripped the ball from the interceptor. The Royals recovered the Gilman 25. Sullivan threw to Clark for an 11-yard touchdown pass. The Royals got back in it at 24 to eight. On their opening possession of the second half, they got down to a first and goal situation, but got pushed back, never scored, and the third quarter ended at 24-8. Copenhaver has the first down at the 22 with 59 seconds to go. Here in the fourth quarter, Colt Linsmeyer got the touchdown run from about two yards out for the Royals to pull them to within 24-14, but they had a failed conversion when they desperately needed two points. It stayed 24-14 and then Copenhaver uh, burst out with a 58-yard touchdown run, 30-14 to in favor of Gilman. And now it's first and 10 with 43 seconds to go. Gilman will just have to take a knee here once or twice to finish off the football game. See if they mark it in play. So that we've got to get one more snap before it's official and we will. One more snap coming to end it tonight. And that'll do it, fans. It's been our joy to bring it to you here on River City's Community Access. Our final score will read Gilman 30 and Assumption High School 14. For our videographer and producer, David Ballerstein, I'm Milt Van Atta. Join us again soon for more prep football on River City's Community Access.